Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach 2022. It's going to be the round 21 wrap up here. And as you can see, we had a nice little, a nice little hit back and it had some drama. It had some drama filled moments this week. Um, it could have been better. It could have been better, but you know, very happy with the score. 1449. It sees us jump another 53 ranks. A little bit of a, you know, a little bit of stabilization after after last week's catastrophe. So you know we're we're we're, we're slowly, you know, clawing our way back to uh, to where we dropped. But uh, yeah, just sitting outside the top 200 now, 205 overall. And yeah, we'll get down to the uh, to the uh, to the nitty gritty here, and you'll see the drama. <laughs> You'll see the drama I'm talking about, but uh, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Also, oh my, God. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll discuss when we get to it. But uh, starting out with Harry Grant banging out 97 points. Thank God he finally got some actual updates. Like he was, I think he was on like 60 odd um, at the end of this game, and he got an extra try assist. Now, I, I don't know, was a try assist a bit of BS? I don't know. They've been giving those sort of try assists a lot, but Grant has been, Grant has been screwed the last couple of weeks. I'm, I'm being dead set. <laughs> he has absolutely been shafted with the scoring the last couple of weeks, so I'm, I'm very happy that he actually finally got some decent points, because yeah, he's just, he's just been shafted. So 97, fantastic. Um, McInnes only the 50 points, which was disappointing. I played him this week pretty comfortably in the reserves because, you know, playing playing at lock without Fanukin. How many minutes did he actually play? He only played goddamn 53 minutes, dude. <laughs> I don't, the one week I play him, literally the one week I play him, he plays 53 minutes, which I... I, I expect him to play 60 plus, um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I gotta be honestly, Sharks with Wade, Wade. Wade Graham has to move on, dude. Wade Graham. I mean, I, honest. I'll be honest. I was never really a huge fan of Wade Graham, but you know, he was a good player. I was never a massive fan. I always thought he overplayed his hand massively, um, and just yeah, halted a lot of attacking options. You know, taking away from the halves, and as he's gotten older. He's gotten a lot worse, but he still dictates a lot of the footy and just doesn't really do anything with it. And now with the rotation, like he he must have went into the middle and then Teague Wilton went to the edge for a bit. It was it was very frustrating to watch, but it is what it is. McKinn is 50. I mean, I'll take it. It's fine. Uh, our front row, <laughs> a bit of a, a bit of a drop off from uh, from the heights of last week. Both of these guys getting big tons. Joe Tarpany has injured his ribs, which is a big big blow, um, but not not really that massive. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the people in the top echelon have Tarpany, and if they didn't, then you know they're they're, <laughs> they're loving it now. But um, if you know, let's be honest, most people did. 26 points though, it's going to be, I got to be honest, <laughs> as as selfish as it is, I'm sort of hoping he gets ruled out for a couple of weeks because again, dude, I've got three trades left. I've got three trades left. A lot of people have no trades left. So if I can, if I can swing a big trade and Tarpany is gone, it just means my team can get stronger. Well, a lot of other people hopefully cannot, uh, cannot do a trade. And the big thing here is I can switch Tamalolo into the front row and I can pick up a back rower, which would be, I mean, I think we all know who I'm going to want to get, but uh, if I can afford him, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm actually not too sure. I think he might be a bit more expensive, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Papa Lee, you know, once again, it looked like he got a bit of an update. He got 61 points, which is, again, it's fine. I mean, he's averaging 80 for the season. It's ridiculous. Uh, Max King, once again, just banging out 45 points. Uh, Pole, I, I, I thought he'd play more minutes. I I don't I, I don't know what the hell he was doing with the interchange, Noddy. Um, how many minutes did he actually play? It was like very few. Yeah, he played 37 minutes. I don't, I don't get it. The first two games he played, he played over 40, looked really good. And then he's just gone... I mean, I know he's young to the team, but it's not like he's playing... It's not like he's going to be playing 20-odd games this year. Like, I, I, I don't get it. I really don't understand. Um, 
the 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 rotation there at the at the Tigers didn't make any damn sense. Uh, the back row was up and down. Olakwatu looked awful. It <laughs> just absolutely god awful. I mean, he looked really slack. I'm not gonna lie. He only played like six odd minutes and. He had a couple of nice plays in defense, but geez, he looked, I don't know, I gotta be honest, it didn't look like he wanted to be there. Obviously, he's hes one of the guys coming back from that, uh, <laughs> the, the drama of last week, so I don't know if that took a toll, but I, he didn't look like he wanted to be there at all. Um, Angus Crichton, thankfully, banged out a big one, 96, and then Dave Fafita, 57. I actually, watching this game, I actually thought Fafita was going to score pretty well. Like, I know he didn't get any attacking stats, but it looked like his work rate was pretty solid. Um, he made plenty of tackles. He, he had a few tackle busts, a couple offloads. I thought he's actually going to score a few more points, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, Adam Elliott did end up playing, like, decent minutes. He got 62. You know, it didn't really hurt me that I didn't play him. Um... He's really good cover. He's not really punching out those massive scores because he's only playing. Again, I I don't understand um, the rotation with Elliott, but, you know, he played a few more minutes this week. He actually played 64 minutes, but, um, but yeah, it didn't hurt me too much. Uh, Tamalolo, only the 55 points again, didn't play huge minutes. And then Ben Draboyevich with a six. So this is <laughs> this is where it gets very uh, drama-filled for us. Um, I'm back, I'm back. You wouldn't have noticed too much of a <laughs> difference in the video, but I had, to, I had to duck away for a second. But what was I talking about? Okay, yeah, Ben, ben Trebojevic with a six. <laughs> yeah, I think you can probably you can probably guess what ended up happening. Um, but if we go down into a halves, Nico Hines again just banged out a hundred plus. I, it didn't look. I, He's one of the. He's like a Nathan Cleary. Like it didn't look like he really did much at all. I know he got that uh, that solo try. I think he had another try assist, but there wasn't too. Like he didn't really do too much else. He just got a hundred points somehow. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> he just he just shits out points. But uh, you know, it, it was nice to see. Um, Karen Munster with the one forty seven, and as you can see, we had the vice captaincy on him. Um, that's a big score. That's a big score that I did not loop. <laughs> um, because, obviously, the bench of Voyevich 6, it was, it, was, it was a tough call. It was a very tough call. And then Matty Burden with that 85, which is, thank God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm, I, this, is, this has actually killed me. Dylan Brown. <laughs> Dylan Brown has come out, and I think he got 100, I think he got 100 plus, um, all I can say is thank God Burden came out and got 85 points, it didn't, like, it cost me a few points, but it didn't cost me that much, but, oh my sweet Jesus, <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it, Dylan Brown, oh, I really didn't, I, they had a tough draw, no Moses. I really expected Dylan Brown to... You know, I thought he would still punch out like 50-odd points because, I mean, he just has really high base. But I didn't I didn't expect him to go pretty much as good as he's gone all year. It's, it's killed me. It's absolutely killed me inside. But uh, we'll get to the other thing that's killed me as well. Um, but then our back line, Joey Manu, 48. It is what it is. Rumi Garrick, 74. Adam Dewey, who I brought in for my Sivo. Oh my god. I can't, I can't. I just can't fathom it. Adam Dewey gets 53. I don't know what Sivo got, but he got another fucking two tries. He's got, he's got what was that like four doubles in a row now? I just oh Okay, oh my god, that Manly game was so frustrating to watch, dude, because one, I tipped Manly to win, I, I thought they were specials, I thought they would win, but they, they didn't, and then uh, and then watching Dylan Brown and Mike Acevo score bulk points was just a, such a, it was such a dagger in the heart, <laughs> I can't, oh, I can't believe it, and then Isaiah Tass, I played, he got 40 points, um, I still think it was the right decision to play Tass, but unfortunately, well, Taylor Manny got 40, so it was fine, but Joey Sawali, 
got 70 points. He got a nice little try at the end of the game to just, again, just rub salt into the wound. I've, I've just, you know, I've had a bit of, I've had a bit of bad luck recently with the, with some of the trades and also some of the plays, but you know, I don't know. Bringing in Dewey, I still think was the right decision because he was still a pod and they, they would take on the Knights, but my God, the Tigers were terrible and Dewey was fucking awful. Holy shit. Like, Everybody has been loving Dewey. Like I've got to, I've got to be honest. I think Dewey is pretty overrated as a player. In my personal opinion, <laughs> I think he's very overrated compared to what a lot of people think he is. Um, but he can do some good stuff. Obviously, I just don't think he's as good as what people make him out to be. His defense was fucking disgusting. Holy! Um, if that was like Luke Brooks or. I mean, pretty much any other half people don't like, they would be calling for him to be sacked. They would be calling for him to, to be dropped for all time. His defense was so bad. Like, it was it was awful. And he barely touched the football. Like, he, he played, honestly, one of the worst performances from from the guy that should have stood up with no Hastings and, and obviously no Brooks. But, yeah, it was awful. Um, thankfully, he got the... Did he get a try or did he get a try assist? Yeah, I think he got a try assist off a kick. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'll take the 50 points because he played like absolute dog shit. Um, and then our fullbacks, oh, baby. So Tedesco with the 99 and then Big Latrell, 152. I've got to, I'm, I'm a little salty. I knew it was coming, but they took him off with like 20 minutes to go. Fucking Blake Taft went on the field. And, you know, the, the Rabbitohs look like, trash when when Mitchell went off they didn't really have too much to offer <laughs> I'll be honest um but man if you just start, like it could have been such a massive swing because obviously not that many people would have captained Mitchell and especially if they vice captain Munster which they should have um you know the safe bet was just looping Munster taking the 350 points 300 points with captain um and if Mitchell just stayed on the rest of the 20, he could have got, you know, I, I'm not saying 200, but, you know, 180. That would have been a massive turnaround. But, you know, he got subbed off. I mean, thankfully, he got the 150, I guess, because there was a stage there where he was on, like, I think he was on, like, 12 points. Um, they had three tries, and he hadn't touched the football. And I was, like, I was losing it because I, I thought... I was like, oh my god, the, the Rabbitohs are literally killing them through the middle. Mitchell is not going to get any attacking stats, and they're going to sub him off in the second half because they're going to be flogging him, flogging uh, whoever they were saying. I can't even remember. Um, the Warriors, I think it was. Yeah, it was the Warriors. Um, and I was like, they're going to take him off, but he's going he's gonna to have like no stats apart from goal kicks. But thankfully, you know, Mitchell, he's always been about quantity, not quality. He does not touch the footy much, but every time he does, it's uh, it, it's panic stations for the defense. But uh, but yeah, so that was the big gamble. And I mean, I guess it was it was sort of good because because Trebojevic got the six points, it was, I mean, it was still a gamble because I, I, I did like the calculations, right? I wasn't going to play Burden, um, and obviously I wasn't going to Captain Mitchell. So the way it worked out, I think if I if I did it like that, if I looped and I got Trebojevic's six, I think the total points would have been about 380-something um, if they got their projected. If Burden got... I think his projected was like 60 and Mitchell's was like 100. So if they got their projected, which was still high, like 100 for Mitchell and 60 for Burton was still pretty high, um, I would have got like 380 odd. If I looped, on, no, if I uh, if I didn't loop and and Mitchell got his projected, I played Burden and I got Munsters, whatever, and I didn't get Benjaboyvich's 6, it worked about it. It worked out about the same. I think it was like 10, 10 or so points extra. So it was, it was honestly a pretty gutsy decision not to loop because, like I said, the 100 points for Mitchell was still a high score and he had to do something special to go past that. Um, so it, the risk reward wasn't great, but I was like, you know what? I'm, you know, I'm 200 odd. 
if it if it doesn't pan out and I drop another hundred spots, like what's the difference? Like if I if I'm two hundred or bloody seven hundred by the end of the year, like it literally doesn't matter. So I was like, just take the take the gamble, and it worked out. I didn't I didn't cop the AE of six. Burden got eighty five, and uh, and Mitchell got one hundred and fifty. So it uh, it was a ballsy play, but uh, it paid off very nicely. Um, but yeah, what was a I was going to look at something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. Um, I have no idea. I was going to look, going to look at Brown. I just want to be so upset. <laughs> How many did he actually finish on? Um, Dylan Brown. Look at the top... Dude, the top scoring players, we've got so many of them. We just don't... Yeah, fucking Dylan Brown. We don't have Dylan Brown <laughs> anymore. Damian Cook got a 94. Um... Dylan Edwards, Dylan Edwards is up in the top, uh, the top 10 of the point scoring, you know, he's obviously played more games than every other fullback here, but <laughs> it still is what it is, I mean, Mitchell Moses is still 12 for total points, that's crazy, um, Gutherson got 127, but, uh, yeah, Dylan Brown, 98 points, oh my god, look at the last, dude, <laughs> I can't, I can't believe it, <laughs> I mean, he was still scoring really well. You know, 84, 58, 57, 70, 62. And then when I trade him out, 80 and 98 against two very tough teams. Obviously, the Panthers, they play with an extra man. And then the Seagulls, I mean, the Seagulls were just... Ugh, their defense was so awful. It just made me so mad. But uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. What can you do? Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's how we went. Pretty happy overall couple of disappointments but uh but yeah we we can cover so i don't think they've got um i don't know obviously we're gonna wait to trade tarpany but let's just let's just have a look because if we trade our tarpany in the back row i don't how much is murray how much is he i feel like he's gonna be 700 right he's not he's only 640 um, so I can trade Tarpany straight to Cam Murray. Obviously, he's not gonna he's not gonna go 130 every week. He got like he had like three tries this in the opening 20 odd minutes. Like he was absolutely carving up. I think I gotta be honest. This this also just baffles me. Like he 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 subs Mitchell out, even though Mitchell. I mean, obviously he had some pretty impressive attacking stats. But let's be real, Mitchell did not do that much work. Like, he wasn't... He didn't really do that much work. Cameron Murray, on the other hand... Cameron Murray still played 66 minutes. Actually, I thought he played more than that, honestly. But I, I thought he would get spelled a little bit earlier. Um, I, I just didn't think they needed to play him that much. It was just a bit strange. Because, uh, I mean, he played 80, 86 the week before. So, I mean, Murray... They're taking on Parramatta, Panthers, Cowboys, Roosters. It's a tough draw, but, I mean, Murray is pretty much... I mean, against the weaker teams through the middle, obviously, he's got that ceiling. He's not going to have the ceiling against the better forward packs, you would think, but he's still going to be probably the best back rower. Although, I mean, you could go for a real pod. Like, who who is, who is a pod? Let's look at, like, guys under... 10%. Tohu Harris, no, not interested. Often Gowie. I mean, often Gowie's been absolutely killing it. <laughs> he just keeps banging out points, but I'm not that interested. Madison Hudson Young, eh, not that interested. I feel like there's not really going to be too many pods. Um, I mean, Ruben Cotter? Ruben Cotter? I mean, I, I just don't think Ruben Cotter's going to have the ceiling. I mean, even when he was, like, absolutely killing it in base stats, like, he was only getting... Yeah, I mean, he, 89, very good, 60, 72. He was getting, like, those high 60s, 70s, but that's not going to... You know, it's not going to win you the the comp. Like, it's not going to make up that many points. Um, I don't think there's really going to be too much else, honestly. There's not, uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of, like, pods to really go for, unfortunately. It's just, just how it is. Um, Luciano Le Lua. <laughs> if you, if you started, if he started, whew, he's looking good, but, yeah, you can't, you can't pick him on the bench. It's just a little bit, uh, 
a little bit too dangerous. But yeah, there, there's an option. I feel like I'll just go Murray. If, if Tarpin is out for a couple of weeks, which I'm, I am hoping he is just because, you know, I've got the luxury of a couple of trades. Um, we can bring in Murray. Uh, I guess the other guy, I mean, the back line, who are the Roosters playing this week? Roosters are playing the, uh, the Cowboys. I probably play... Eh, Panthers taking on the Storm. I don't think I play May again. I think Sawali comes in for Tars. I think that's just, you know... I still I still worry about Sawali just because Manu is just such a ball hog <laughs> that Sawali doesn't really see much footy in, in good attacking possession. But, you know, he's got the work rate. If he just jags a try, he's going to score well. Um, so, I mean, the, the back line, I, I don't know. I wouldn't mind getting another good back line player, but it's a little tricky. I don't have that much cash now, and, you know, I could, you know, make a little bit of cash on Cleary. Because I, I don't even know, like, I, I don't know, the halfbacks. Actually, this is, I'm probably going to get Cherry Evans. Like, he only got 32. The Seagulls just didn't look very good. Obviously, Hughes is out injured potentially for a couple of weeks. Moses isn't playing. Sam Walker. I mean, see, Walker only got like 59 against the Bronx, even when they score a lot of points. Ben Hunt, 56. Thomas Deeding got 72. Adam Reynolds, who is somehow 8% of teams own him, which is baffling. Um, 29. Uh, Luke Keary. I mean, Keary maybe is the guy. <laughs> maybe Keary's the guy. I don't know. He, he's too up at like... <laughs> He's got too many low scores. Like, even before that, he had 30, 66, 12, 36. I, I, I couldn't go that. And uh, they don't have a very easy run like I was looking at before. Um, I think it's Cherry Evans because, I mean, they take on the Titans this week. Like, it's just such a good... You just have to bring in a guy that's taking on the Titans. Then they have the Sharks, which will be tough. Raiders, which, who knows? And then the Doggies. You know, I don't have to play him every week, but playing him for this week is like, it's massive. He's not goal kicking, but surely there's some attack there. Like, surely against the Titans, they can score some points. Um, so I could do that, and it would, it would free up some cash. If I went Cherry Evans, it would free up some, what would it give me? Yeah, it wouldn't give me that much. It would give me like 100, 120, 130-odd K. Um, so then I could upgrade, let's just say 100k, so I could get rid of Taylor May for someone around that 550 mark. There's probably not going to be too much around that mark, honestly, that I'm, I'm that keen on. I got Manu, Holmes, too expensive, I, I just can't go there. Unless I like nuffed out Cleary, then I could, but yeah, just, just way too expensive. Alex Johnston, also way too expensive, and you know... I just, I've just never gone Johnston. He just, he just keeps scoring, but I mean, you know, his scores have been a, he started to drop back. He started to drop back and they've got a, they've got a tough run, the Rabbits. So I'm not, not that keen. Um, Edric Lee is the, <laughs> he went on a bit of a run. That's right. Um, why am I looking at the higher price anyway? I can, I can afford 550. <laughs> well, like five, 560 or whatever. So, I mean, Cobo got 18. Tungo fell back down to earth a bit with the 36. Uh, my fucking work is here, mate, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. I cannot believe he got, he's got fucking four doubles in a row. I mean, I had it. I've, I've had him from the start, so I can't be too disappointed, but I got rid of him last week for fucking Dewey, and, uh, and he scored two tries. But, you know, they have a tough run. Well, somewhat tough. I don't know. Surely the tries dry up. <laughs> um, Herbie Farnworth is hopefully back soon, but, you know, you're probably not going to go. Um, Kiraz, To'o, Ramian. Um, yeah, there's there's just not much else. Even, like, like I said, even pod plays, like, I I don't know. I mean, Ado Car, like... He's not really scoring many points. Like, he's getting tries, but they're all off, like, kicks. So, he's, he's not really doing that much. Jason Saab had a, <laughs> had the best game I've ever seen him play. He was ridiculous. Um, Nofaluma. He got 48 on debut, but, yeah. The Storm have a tough run now, so I probably wouldn't be looking there. 
Honestly, honestly, Stephen Crichton is actually a sneaky pot. I'm, I'm surprised he's owned in 9.6% of teams. That's got me a little shocked. I thought it'd be way lower. But honestly, Crichton kicking goals? Oh, that's a little juicy. I remember last year, I, I had Crichton for a little bit when he went on an absolute tear. Banged out like some big tons. Um... They took a Melbourne South Warriors Cowboys. Wow, <sighs> I don't know. Like honestly, I, I could see myself going with a bit of a pod in Crichton. He's on a massive pod, but like goal kicking, surely he's going to turn into a bit of this. I feel like they're going to attack better probably to that side of the field now without. Well, kick. I guess Kikiao's back this week, so that puts a bit of a damper on things. But um. Honestly, I would like if, if Dylan Edwards got... I know he, he was carrying on about that fucking chest injury. Everyone was acting like Dylan Edwards um, must have broke his goddamn stern and the way he was carrying on and he kept playing because he's so tough and now he's not actually injured at all. That's fucking ridiculous. Um, but if Dylan Edwards was actually out, like Stephen Crichton going to fullback, oh, baby, sign me up. Um, but probably not going to happen. Uh, but I don't know, a bit of a wait and see. Katoni Staggs, you know, <laughs> take a bit of a punt on on Staggs, who's, who's been in absolute god-awful form, but he could turn it around. Um, and then, yeah, not not too much else, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, there, there's, a, there's a couple of things. There's, there's a couple of potential plays, for sure. Molotalo is continuing to not do that much, which is good to see. Um, you know, I still stuff like I, I went I went Campbell Graham instead of Molotalo, and obviously Graham just absolutely I mean he scored no points when I got him and then he obviously did his cheekbone. Um but thankfully Molotalo hasn't gone and just absolutely killed it, so it, it's been a little bit easier to, to stomach. Um But yeah, that's I mean that's pretty much pretty much it. I mean Xavier Coates is back. But yeah, the storm they don't uh, they don't have a real easy run. Or like or a lot of these good pl like decent pod players, they don't have great runs. They they're all sort of versing each other, so it's not it's not great either way. But yeah, I don't know. I th I th it's a wait and see. I do think. I mean, again, like if Tarpany plays, I'm obviously I'm obviously not going to trade him out. Um... I would love Cameron Murray, but I wouldn't have the money to get him unless I, like, traded out Cleary for a cheaper guy and then traded out. I mean, that that might be the play, honestly. Trade out Cleary, free up a bit of cash, and then get rid of, I don't know, probably Elliot because I, I just can't see myself playing Elliot anymore just because he's not getting the massive minutes. And let, I mean, the thing is, is that if Tarpany's out now, hopefully Elliot does get more minutes. So that would be a silver lining there. Uh, but there, there's a couple of things we can do. We still have a couple of trades to go, so it's nice. Um, we got to be a little careful, though, because there's still a few rounds left. <laughs> you know, I, would, I don't want to use all my trades. You know, I've put myself in a good position. I don't need to make the trades. You know, I, I can, I, you know if there's a bit more carnage, I, you know, I could come home strongly if there's a bit of carnage, everybody use, use their trades, and I can I can swing a couple of people around. So, you know, no, no, point, no point just wasting the trades on, on, on nothing, so to speak. So, unless there's a good option... I guess that's what I was saying. Cleary is probably... I think Cherry Evans is the main one I'm probably looking at, depending on Tarpany. Depending on what we hear on Tarpany, I don't know. I still would want Cherry Evans against the Titans, but we'll see how we do it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. Make sure to like and comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.